Bob Wallace, hey partner, great to see you again. Here's what we covered. We converted the major to minor, and you do that by three variations. You flat the three, the six, and the seven. So one, two, flat three. That gets us a G natural. Five, sorry, one, two, flat three, four, five. Now we flatten the sixth, that gives us a C natural, and we flatten the seventh, that gets us a D natural. Then we're at the same old octave. So do all the same articulations. The up, down, on, off, slide, with and without the um, pedal tone, the open B, um, double stop. That was that. Then we talked about pentatonic scales. We talked about the theory of them very briefly. A major pentatonic drops the fourth and the seventh scale degree, just slashes them out. So on the low E string, major is. Now I'm going to slash the fourth G sharp and the seventh D sharp. You end up with these very wide intervals called minor thirds. So E, F sharp, G sharp, D, three to the fifth, third to the fifth. Then the fifth to the sixth, still a whole step. Then we have another minor third, C sharp to E. More importantly, I'm having you play this in what I call static position, which means scales that don't move laterally. They stay in a single space. So if we convert that major pentatonic to a static scale, you get oh, two, four, two, four, two. Played with that swing on purpose. That transfers beautifully to A. Now the B shift means you gotta shift the B string note up a half a step to compensate, because it's tuned in thirds. So your middle finger, that's D3, octave of the open D. And then for G, your whole hand will shift with the B string to keep your strong fingers up there. And we talked about a few tricks. We talked about the second degree of the scale is always the easiest to bend. Not necessarily physically easy, but just melodically fitting. A hammer offs, double hammer ons, double pull off. Uh, you can hammer off the B string, or the first string. Now we have another second note. Half step, gets you a minor third, a kind of bluesy, or whole step. This is a much sweeter sound. We talked about double stops, these are parallel fourths. And anytime you see that move, you can just move one voice with a hammer on. So here, that shape starts with a flat finger, but on the G and B string, it starts with this shape, which is also a fourth, but it's different because of the B string. And here you can do the same things. Sorry. Parallel motion slide or a ring finger hammer on. And that's what the weight does, but the weight's in the key of A. So it does that in three different places. It starts here. Sorry, let me refresh that idea. Do your A major scale. And then I showed you the second octave, sliding with your middle finger from four to six. It'll kind of map out the A space for this song. So we're going to start here with a perfect fourth and hammer on. Then do one here. Then um, second one there. Then back. And shift this down a full step to a D. And do a perfect fourth here on the G and D strings. And it's important to go from the G string right to the A string slide off it. So I'm not, again, copy, copying this perfectly, but it's close. Sorry. That's an embellishment we talked about, which is, um, it's the D over A, this little double the suspension. And you do down, down, two downs in a row, and then up, down, up, releasing on the last upstroke. Up, down, up, up, down, up. So it's. So in the context that came at the end of the verse line. He 
does that habitually at the end of the line. And then in the chorus, one major part, just a little bit more detailed by adding a G sharp bass on the second beat. Take a load off it. told you to walk this down with a flat finger A, A over G sharp, A over F sharp, A over E to D. And I've always liked to end the song this way, just on a repetitious little loop. Put the low right on me. Okay, final thing we talked about was the bar chord scale in A. So if you make, which is fitting for the song, of course, if you make A your one, B minor is two, C sharp minor is three, D is four, E is five, F sharp minor is six. Add a little rhythm, maybe a picking pattern, and just play that up and down like you would any other scale. Um, I mentioned that like a Rolling Stone goes one, two, three, four, five. It's not in this key, it's in C. Um, but it's um Once upon a time you dress so fine Through the bums of diamond you cry Didn't you? And the last piece of harmonic information was that if you switch to minor keys with these I want you to keep practicing those one four fives. You just pick a key each day and strum through those incessantly, make up patterns, but you want to really drill down that the E, A, and the B are a three chord unit. Uh, and the A, D, E, etc, etc for the five main keys. But when you go minor, just make the one and the four minor. And leave the five alone. I see the red door and I want to paint fly. It's one example. But the other example we found that you're analyzing is the Beatles tune here, there, and everywhere. So it's in the key of G major. So a one, four, five, what I would call one, four, five box would be G, C, D. And this is a very stable little box. You can make the D a D7. One, four, five. But now if you make these bar chord boxes minor, G minor, C minor, D7. This is called a parallel minor key shift. When the, when the root note stays fixed on G and the key shifts correspondingly. So while my guitar gently weeps is an example. That's A minor to A major. So anyways, that little bit of um, harmonic information will help you analyze the, the chart. Good luck, bud. See you soon.